Welcome back to Conrad's Corner on KDRT 95.7 FM in Davis. I'm Conrad Wilton. To learn more information about the program, check us out online at www.conradscornerradio.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Conrad's Corner. It is an absolute honor to introduce and take the call of a good friend of mine from Los Angeles. It's Brian Kelly on Conrad's Corner of the Jackie Robinson Foundation. Brian, how are you? I'm good, Conrad. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So, just to inform the listeners, Brian is a member of the Foundation's Scholar Advisory Committee for the Western United States. The Foundation, established in 1973, is celebrating its 42nd year, providing sizable scholarships to about 50 students of color nationwide each year and invaluable guidance, of course, throughout college to these scholars to ensure academic and lifelong success. So 42, obviously, is a very special number, Brian, because that's the number Jackie Robinson wore with the Brooklyn Dodgers from 1947 to 1956. What does number 42 mean to you? Well, as you, uh, as you mentioned, 42 was Jackie Robinson's number, and I think the foundation, and Rachel Robinson in particular, has done a, a really great job of branding the number 42, so that it's become synonymous with Jackie Robinson and his life and what he's meant to the country. And for me, because of my affiliation with the foundation, I, I have a personal connection with Jackie Robinson. And, uh, you know, so for me, it's, it's what his life represented. It's that excellence, that, uh, that desire, and that perseverance to uh, overcome whatever obstacles are in your way, to, per- to persevere in the, uh, in the uh, face of hardship, and uh, just an overall commitment to excellence. That's really what Jackie Robinson represents. Of course, me being a huge Dodger fan, uh, that, that just, just his affiliation with the best team out there, in my opinion. Is, of course. Uh, uh, that, that alone is reason to love this man. But, but you know, I'm an L.A. guy, so, yes. uh, you know, a huge Dodger fan. So being, him being a part of the, uh, the Dodger organization, and then, of course, you know, I went to UCLA, Jackie went to UCLA, so there's a lot of parallels there. Yes, yes. Well, of the countless scholarship foundations in the United States, and it has to number in the thousands, if not higher than that, the the Jackie Robinson Foundation boasts one of the highest graduation rates for its scholars. Indeed, I mean, basically everybody graduates. It's it's like 98 to 100 percent or so of Jackie Robinson scholars graduate. Yeah. And the graduation rate for minority students in this nation is surprisingly around 50 or so percent. So the numbers are, are uh, just simply tell the whole story here. Even Jackie Robinson himself didn't graduate from college. Right, yeah, Jackie did leave a little bit uh, just short of his uh, of graduation, uh, and he went on to, uh, he ended up going into the military. He was drafted, uh, I think it was right before World War II, um, or when World War II broke out, he, he was drafted into the military. So he actually didn't get his degree from UCLA. But yeah, you mentioned the graduation rate, and the graduation rate is, as you said, 98%, which is not just one of the highest graduation rates in the country, it is the highest graduation rate for scholarship organizations around the country. And if you think about the fact that the graduation rate nationally for minority students is around 50%, and even for all students, regardless of uh, race or ethnicity, is still in the 60s in terms of percentages, that 98% mark, uh, you know, becomes even more impressive. And it's the reason why the Jackie Robinson Foundation has been able to grow uh, as, as much as it has in the uh, 40-some years that it's been around because of the success rate it has with regards to making sure that students attend college, and not just attend college, but finish and graduate and go on to be productive citizens. It's good that you mentioned this because... A lot of times when people think of scholarship foundations, the first thing they think of is what someone just said, scholarship, and, and that is money. I mean, it just hits the mind, especially when it comes to college. The, the financial uh, burdens are, are just uh, through, the, through the roof these days. But there's a lot more to this organization than just writing checks. It seems like money opens the door to higher education, certainly. I mean, you have to pay the bill. But mentorship and leadership and a lot of the other services that this organization provides walks these kids through that door and on to better lives. So if you could talk a little bit more about the mentorship and, and the leadership skills that, uh, that the scholars learn through this organization, it might speak to why this, uh, why, why the foundation has such a high graduation rate of 98%, which is really unbelievable. Right, right. Well, yeah, there is, a, there is obviously a financial component to the scholarship, and it's about in the, uh, I think now it's in the neighborhood of twenty five to $30,000 in terms of a total uh, uh, financial award. But the, the, 
thing that makes the Scholarship Foundation, Jackie Robinson Foundation, different is that mentoring and um, leadership component that uh, that the, that the foundation puts forth. You have to remember, Jackie Robinson was more than just a baseball player. He was a humanitarian. He was a civil rights activist. He was a community leader. And when Rachel Robinson founded the foundation, her goal was to develop young people to emulate that, to uh, be more of what Jackie Robinson was. So she wants young people that are going to come in, uh, develop, graduate, and then go on to make an impact on their community. So being a part of the foundation is what that is about. So when we bring scholars in, it's not just here's your check, you know, hope you graduate. We bring you in, you're you're fully connected to the scholars to the scholarship foundation at all times. We're constantly monitoring you. We're constantly having you participate in uh, leadership and development workshops. Um, every year, the the big uh, event for the foundation each year is the annual mentoring and leader, leadership conference, in which we bring all the scholars, which is at any given time around 200, uh, 225 scholars. We bring them to New York every year, which is where the foundation is headquartered. And there's four days of, as I mentioned, developmental workshops, um, seminars on career exploration. Um, we have them meet with uh, leaders in the public and private sector, life skills classes. Uh, we get them involved in community service activities. So it's a full four days of really being involved in what the foundation is all about. And during that time, you make these lifelong connections with other students. And it really is a family. And if you, if you talk to uh, scholars who have gone through the program, that's how they reference the foundation, is it's a family. And so Rachel Robinson's goal was to develop these students so that they, they get used to the idea of contributing to their community, um, and they go on and make an impact on the lives of others after they've graduated. You're listening to Conrad's Corner on KDRT 95.7 in Davis. I'm Conrad Wilton. Our guest, Brian Kelly of the Jackie Robinson Foundation. So uh, you mentioned that the foundation really prides itself on the mentorship, leadership skills, and this this trip to New York where you, you, you can really meet the other scholars and form a network and uh, you mentioned the word family, which is always uh, which is always excellent. And, and you you are a part of that family, not just because you're 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 uh, a member of the scholarly advisory committee for the Western Region, but you yourself are a Jackie Robinson scholar. Absolutely, absolutely. I got the scholarship coming out of high school in uh, in 1992. Ah, you, I didn't know you would say the date. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm dating myself with that one. It's really hard to believe that it's been uh, it's going almost 25 years. Uh, since I was in high school and since I first became a part of the foundation. So, so yeah, I have that firsthand experience of going through the program, of experiencing that, that trip to New York, which you have to do every year. So I went all four years while I was in college. And it's really an amazing experience. It opens your eyes to what the possibilities are out there. A lot of these students, you know, they haven't ventured much further than the uh, – you know, than a few miles outside of their neighborhood. So to be flown to New York from whatever part of the country you're from, to meet these students from other parts of the country, to meet these business leaders and uh, government leaders. I mean, when, you're, when, when I say you're meeting people in New York, the, the final dinner uh, is a black tie dinner at the Waldorf Astoria. And it's been, in the past years, it's been hosted by Bill Cosby, but, you know, for several reasons he hasn't hosted in the last year or two. But um, it's always a, a black, it's a black tie event. I think it's a $1,500 a plate. Um, and you have all of the, all of New York's uh, elite in the, uh, in the uh, building for that dinner. I mean, the governor, uh, the mayor, uh, you know, when I was there, I met Pat Riley when he was coach of the Knicks. Uh, they give a hat, they give a humanitarian award, an industry award at that dinner. And, and the recipients have been anywhere from Hillary Clinton uh, to uh, Republican presidential uh, candidate Ben Carson, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan. Uh, okay, I, I get the idea here. <laughs> My goodness. So $1,500 a plate, the, the food must be magical. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, when you're paying that much, you're not really paying for the meal. You know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a commitment to the to the foundation and what the foundation represents. And I think the uh, the people writing those checks at that time are, are happy to do it regardless of how the fish tastes. 
Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Wow. Okay. So uh, you, as we said at the top of the interview, you do sit on the the Western region of the foundation's uh, scholar advisory committee. So you get to interact with these scholars year in and year out, review their applications and and interview them, correct? Right, right. We are the, uh, there's eight, there's eight committees around the country and we are that, uh, we are the ones that select the scholars for the incoming year. So I probably go through about a hundred and, well, there's about 3,500 to 4,000 scholarship applicants each year, and that's sent to the New York office, and then New York does sort of an initial screening, and then they distribute the um, top applications to the various regions. So I personally probably go through about 150 applications uh, each year, and then we select out of those 150 applications, we'll select about 24 students that will actually do in-person interviews um, over a two-day period and select um, a few scholars from that uh, interview pool. Okay. And if you do the math, you said around four or so, 3,500 to 4,000 applicants and about 50 scholars are awarded uh, uh, scholarships at the end of the day. So that's, uh, I don't know, it's got to be like one to two percent, right? Uh, <laughs> Just roughly. The, I'm, I'm relying on you to do the <laughs> <laughs> well, we, look, we're, 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 we're both going to be lawyers. You are, and I, right. I will be. So math is not exactly a strong suit. Right, right. Uh, anyway, uh, what, tell me a little bit more about the, the, the process. Uh, what skills and traits do you look for personally in evaluating potential scholars? Well, we look for students that have, uh, that have done well academically, of course, um, not just as far from an aptitude standpoint, but, you know, getting good grades in school is really a, a, a test of perseverance and a willingness to put in the work and put in the time to do what you need to do to succeed. So we definitely look at, look at grades and test scores and that sort of thing. But even more importantly, that from my perspective is a willingness to be involved in their school communities and the communities around them. And so you'll see, you know, we ask students on their applications to, you know, let us know what sort of activities they've been involved in at school. And so you get a lot of kids that are doing a lot of great work, a lot of mentoring, uh, a lot of tutoring, a lot of involvement with, you know, their school programs. And so we look for kids that are very much involved because that's, again, as I mentioned earlier, that's really what we're looking for, kids that are willing to um, and have a desire to impact others. You know, we want to we want to see that that sort of um, desire is already there because that's what we want to cultivate and bring out and fine tune. So we look for we look for that, um, and we look for we we ask for recommendations from teachers or counselors and that sort of thing. So we want to see how uh, their their campus community is, is viewing them as well. Where can interested students go to apply and learn more information? Okay, go online. Any student can go online to the website JackieRobinson.org. It'll tell you everything you need to know about the foundation, its history, um, what it's all about, and it'll give you information on uh, application deadlines and the like for the upcoming school year. Yeah, heck, and and a serious message out there to our college-bound listeners. You do that, you get lucky, you might be able to meet Brian Kelly, a Conrad's Corner guest. How do you like that? There you go. <laughs> anyway, Brian, always a pleasure. Thank you so much, and, and definitely keep up the good work. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for having me, Conrad. You got it.